I love using uh, Mask AI to blur the background out in bird images, and I've done one of these in the past, and I really enjoyed the results, so I thought I'd do another one today. So it's really easy to do, so let's get going. Now you may ask yourself the question, can I do this in Photoshop? And the answer is yes. I mean, using only Photoshop, it's a lot harder to do. It's so much easier to do in Topaz Mask AI. Someday, maybe I'll do a tutorial showing you how to do it in Photoshop, but it truly is a lot trickier, but it's really easy here. So I'm not even going to duplicate my background layer because I have uh, Mask AI already set up to do that for me. So I'm just going to come up to Filter and we're going to launch Mask AI and we will get started. I'm providing a link for this image in the uh, description below. It's a stock image. It's a free stock image, so you can download it and follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. And also, just to let you know, I have a bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel showing you how uh, Mask AI works, so you may want to check those out. So I'm going to go kind of quickly today. But uh, Mask AI uses a tri-map system, and there's three different colors blue for compute, red for cut, and green for keep. And you'll see that here in a second. It's really simple and easy to use. Now you'll notice I have a green overlay over my entire image, meaning Mask AI would say, I want to keep all this. So I have to make determinations now what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to use my blue brush, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to come to the left-hand upper corner of this image here, and I'm going to click on this branch that the bird is sitting on. I'm going to click one time right here. I'm going to hold my shift key down. And then I'm going to come to this point right here and click, holding the shift and clicking, shift clicking the whole way around here. And when I do that, it makes it really simple to outline around this bird and all the areas that I want to keep. Now, you may ask yourself, well, Dave, why didn't you use the auto select uh, button to select these areas right here? Well, to be honest with you, Mask AI is not, it's intelligent, but not that intelligent. In other words, it doesn't know that I want to keep the, the branch of the bird sitting on and disregard all the other stuff. So it would get a little bit uh, confused. So it, to me, in a case like this, it's easier just to do it this way. Now, in this area of the bird, I'm just going to paint all blue. And then I'm going to change my brush to a red cut brush. And this is a little tip, a little trick. So come up here and get a red brush. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller yet and just paint a little red line under here like that, just to let Mask AI know I want to get rid of that area. Now I'm going to get a bucket tool, get a red cut bucket and click here and click here. These are the areas that I want to be out of focus. So the green areas I'm going to keep, the red areas I'm going to blur. And now the time you've been waiting for, it's time to compute this mask. Now we have three different ways of computing a mask. We have the AI mode. We have the translucent mode. Think like wedding veils and things that have like a translucency to them, like a veil that you want to see the background kind of through the veil. And we have contrast. Now think contrast for more like a simple mask, like a, a skyline of a city or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to use AI, which is the artificial intelligence, the smart way of doing this. Okay, it's going to use all its special AI tools to do this uh, computation of the mask. And that's generally what I use. Okay, so now all I have to do is click compute mask. And you'll see right now it's computing the mask. We'll just give it a few seconds here and see what kind of a job that it really, really does. And there it is. All right. Now, there are different ways of viewing your uh, results here. See up here where it says view, if you click this, you can view with one pane, two panes, or four panes. And I generally like to use two panes, so I'm just going to leave it on two panes for now. But right now, you'll see I have my tri-map drawn out here. That's what they call this, a tri-map, when you see the blue, green, and red. All right, so I usually like to shut that off, because here's my original image on the left, and here's my masked image on the right. Now, you see I have that checkerboard pattern in the background. That's just letting me know that that's the area that I'm going to do something to, either add a new background to it, or maybe blur that background. And the cool thing about Mask AI is you can do this all inside of Mask AI. Now I'm going to show you how to blur the background, but notice one thing, we have two groups here. We have this refine group. This is where we refine our, our mask here. And I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. My mask looks pretty darn good, so I don't really think I have to do a whole lot with it. And let me go ahead and zoom back out here. 
but we have the refine group. And if we had any issues on the refinement of the edges and things, we would work with here with these uh, adjustments here. And I have other videos showing you how to do that. So go back into my YouTube videos and take a look for those mask AI videos. And then um, we have background here. Now, if I click on background, you'll notice I have different choices here. I have none. That's no background. This is what we have right now. We can blur the background. We can add a color to the background or we can add an image to the background. And we can do this all right inside of Mask AI. Normally, you'd have to do this in Photoshop, but you can do it all right here, which is really cool. And you can use this as a standalone app as well if you didn't have Photoshop. So that's a pretty cool feature. But what we want to do is blur the background. So let's click on Blur. And already, if you compare the image on the left to the image on the right, see how nice that looks with that blurred background. Now we can go even further. Up here, we have this Strength tool right here. So if I take it and start to move it to the right, we can blur this even more. Isn't that cool? And I'm thinking maybe somewhere around there, but just blur it the way you like it. Now you can take it the whole way to the right if you want to and really blur it. But I'm thinking maybe right around here looks really nice. But the image on the left, hey, it looks cool. But the image on the right, I like it. It just really isolates my bird. And I think it's a nice effect. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, not only can we blur the background, but we can also adjust a bunch of things in the background, like the exposure, contrast, highlight, all these different things. Temperature, we can change the temperature, tint, saturation of the background. In other words, I may want to pull that saturation back just on the background. And if you double click the uh, name of the slider, it'll send it back to the default position. So I could take the exposure and maybe darken it up or lighten it up, whatever I wanted to do. But I think it looks really good just the way it is. But I just wanted to point that out. You can make changes here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this image because I see a spot like right here. And it's a good idea to zoom in and really take a look at everything. But look how nice of a job it has done everywhere on this bird. It's done a really great job. This area right here, I might want to fix this. So what I'm going to do is get a brush tool. I'm going to get my cut brush. And what I want to do is just with my little brush here, I just want to paint right across here like this. It'll recompute itself. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I just might hit this little area right here. And I can fix anything I want in uh, Photoshop to bring areas back in. And I'll show you if I need to correct anything after we get back in Photoshop, I will. But let's go ahead and zoom back out. But that's looking good. I'm really happy with it. And once you're happy with your results, and I am, you need to apply the effect. So what you need to do is come down here to apply and click apply. Now you're going to get an option here. And this is very important. Apply image as transparent or composite. Now if I choose transparent, it would send this image back with a layer mask. That's not what I want. And the reason you would want to send it back with a layer mask if you wanted to do your, you know, add a background or do your blurring in Photoshop, but I'm doing it right here in Mask AI. So I want to send it back as a composited images, image, as an image composite. So I'm going to click on composite. And when I do, it sends me back into Photoshop. And you'll notice there's my blurred background on my image. And you'll also notice I have a layer mask uh, attached to it. And I set up uh, Mask AI to give me a layer mask when it comes back in. And you do that in the preferences in Mask AI. And I have videos showing you how to do that on my YouTube channel as well. Let's make the image a little bit bigger here. And as you can see, it did a really great job. Now I'm just really studying the image here. Let's just look at this little area right here. So let me go ahead and zoom into that area right here. And if I wanted to if I thought I didn't like the way this looked right here, I could just get a brush, make sure I'm, I have my mask selected, uh, make sure I have a black brush selected. Uh, I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to give it, right now my opacity is at 22%. I'm going to change that to 100%. And I could just paint like this and paint that little area and see how easy it is to fix things like this. And I have a nice soft edge on my brush here, so I can make that just look nicer. So there you go. So that's what I mean by fixing little things in uh, in Photoshop. So, And if it missed an area of the bird or something like that, I could use the mask to, to add it back in or whatever I needed to do. And just one more thing, this little area right here. Now, this is actually on this branch here, but if I don't like that, I can get my healing brush. And the shortcut for that is J. That's the spot healing brush. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And make sure you're painting on the pixel layer, or in my case... 
I'm going to make a blank layer. I always recommend making a blank pixel layer above it and make sure you have sample all layers checked on and just paint right over here like this on the edge here. And that'll heal that right up and get rid of it. So don't get too crazy inside of Mask AI. Save a lot of these, these kind of issues like this, like cloning and things like that, healing brushes. Do all that in Photoshop. It's so much easier and a lot more effective, to be honest with you. Now let's go ahead and see a before and after. So I'm just going to hold my option key down and click on the background layer. Here's the before and here's the after. Pretty cool. So the before and here's the after. And I could see on this area right in here, watch this area when I do the before. You can see there's a little tip, little bit of the wing that, that is missing here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this before and after. You see that? If you wanted to bring that in, oh, whoops, that was my healing brush. <laughs> I had my spot healing tool on there, and that's that line you saw in there. So all you need to do is go to your history and step back one layer if you ever get a mistake like that you didn't ruin your image you can fix it really simple now let's go ahead and zoom in to that area right here and let's just go on to our um, layer mask on the mask ai layer which is the background copy by the way let me uh get my brush tool here make sure i'm painting with black paint getting a small brush here and i'm at 100 percent opacity and i could simply you know paint Paint anything back in here that I want. Now I can usually what I do is overpaint it. This is a little tip. And now I'm going to switch my paint to white and just paint off these areas like so. Okay, so you see how I can just paint that back in. And this is what I mean by fixing it in Photoshop. Very simple and easy to do. So now let's go ahead and zoom back out. So if you wanted to fix that, and I thought it was acceptable, I didn't really need to fix it. But if you want to fix it, go ahead. Well, there you go. There's uh, blurring out the background in avian photography. So all you avian photographers out there, bird photographers, bird lovers in general, if you want to blur those backgrounds out, Mask AI is the way to do it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, uh, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, guess what? You'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.